All right, guys. Welcome to Rocket Boys Chapter One. <laughs> we have different copies. Oh, we do. Yeah, I know. Okay, That's the different? copy I normally have. Where does um, your chapter two start? Mine starts on page fifteen. Seventeen. Oh. Yep. Right, Mass cool. produced. Okay. Um, which, by the way, if you didn't already know, I don't know if you can see this. There's a movie of this book called October Sky, which if you are watching these to try and catch up with reading, the movie might help you as well. Yeah. Um, also, by the way, the name October Sky is a portmanteau of Rocket Boys. Is it really? Yep. They have the what? same letters. That's how they come up with the name. Really? There's like not really anything that significant Why in October. Why would they just leave it Rocket Boys? I don't know. Because... I don't know. Maybe they just like the idea of sky. I don't know. And that's like one of the main themes. And we're going to talk about that as we go through this book is this idea of the space race. And kind of, I think it kind of opened a lot of these boys' minds to the possibility of living a different life if they wanted to. And that's one thing I try to not like down, like frown upon. You know, if you're watching these, you probably know this book is about a small coal mining community. And I think there's beauty to like working in a small coal mining community. Um, but there's also this sense of, like, this is what you have to do. This is the only place you can be. Uh, but anyway, chapter one, titled Colwood, is where we get a sense of what's happening in this small West Virginia town. So this town, this entire town, is built around the coal mining industry. Uh, so the town would not exist if it weren't for the coal mine. That's obviously owned by a company that's making a profit. Uh, and so what we learn is kind of just like the backstory and history of the coal mine, how it became, what it is today. Uh, and it is a pretty lucrative coal mine. It's lucrative enough that the company has built a bunch of houses for all their coal miners to live in, uh, a school to educate all the children in the community. Sorry, Mountain Dew. <laughs> um, and so like the, there's this whole community, but basically everything's owned by the, the mine. The houses are owned by the mine. The school is owned by the mine. The doctor's office is owned by the mine. Uh, and the mine treats their workers pretty well. Like there's a lot of coal mining communities where they didn't have a school for the kids to, to attend. You know, a lot of coal mining communities where there was no library, there was no basic amenities. And so it speaks well of this company that they have those things for them, but there's also kind of this underlying issue of like, it is owned by the company. The company relies on the coal. Uh, and this first chapter, we have, we were introduced to the main character's family. And the main character's mom, her name is Elsie. One of her main issues with the community and the job is that the coal mine is dying. And we're going to talk about that in more detail when we get to chapter three. But the other thing you're introduced to in chapter one is just the layout of the families, okay? So we have our main character. Here's our main character. How old is he? Like 15? He's 11 when it starts. He's Really? Okay. I th and it kind of like in the first Skips chapter, years. it kind of jumps around a little bit. Okay. Because then when the book, when the story really starts, he's, he's starting like, high school, yeah. so he'd be like 14 or 15. Okay. So it starts when he's 11, but when we kind of hit the meat of the story, we're looking at like a 14, 15. And then by the end of the book, he's a, I think he's a senior. Yeah, yeah. Book. He's like totally. 15. Totally. So this is kind of like his whole entire teenage years. Yeah. Uh, so his name is Homer Hickman. Uh, but what you're going to know him by primarily in this book is the name Sonny. And the reason why he's known as Sonny is because his dad is also Homer Hickman. What, is he Homer Hickman the third? Or I think so. No, right? Homer Hickman Jr. Okay, okay. So his and uh, I'm not going to draw a smiley face on him because I don't think he smiles a whole lot. Uh, Homer Hickman, Sonny's dad, is an interesting character on a few levels. One of them being um, he is... The superintendent of the mine? Is that what they call his I title? I think so. I think it's a superintendent. He's like runs the mine. Yeah. Basically, he's the boss. He's in charge of running the mine. He's in charge of making sure things run. Uh, and along with that job, he is he cares about his miners, but he also cares about the mine, making sure they're mining what they need to make the money they need to keep the city going. Uh, and he's kind of a harsh man. Like, he's he's hard. I would say. Yeah. And um, he's not like mean. No. He's no. just very stern and not very talkative. And, and the other Serious. big thing with him is he is like 
he's busy with the mine all the time. Like the yes. mine is like his number one commitment. And so it's not that he's like at home being mean to his family or anything. No. He's just always gone. No. Always and gone I've noticed mine. as students read this book, they kind of like interpret him as abusive and he's not. He's just no. stern. He's serious. He's, you know, he's, <clears throat> he doesn't totally understand what we'll later find out to be Sonny's ambitions. Yeah. This idea of like, I'm going to go be a scientist and build a rocket. And like, that just sounds crazy to him. <laughs> Which by the way, this is also kind of a generational thing for that time period. That was like very common for fathers to be. Like fathers yes. were very much like serious. Their main thing was their job, and they were very yes. serious. Yes. And they, and I'm like, obviously that's not everybody. But, and like but, they kind of had the iron fist in the family. Like yes, like it was just more traditional gender roles, yeah. really. Uh, and we've kind of broken away from that. But it's like the mom stays home. The mom cares for the family. The mom's kind of the nurturer, and the dad's the provider and the you know disciplinarian and yeah. all that jazz. Uh, so anyway, we have Homer Hickman, and he's important in the story for obvious reasons. We also have Homer's mom, <laughs> and her name is Elsie, uh, and she is super important to the story for obvious reasons as well. I mean, she's Homer's mom, but also it's interesting. We have his mom and dad very much in conflict, and we're kind of introduced to this idea in the book that uh, Homer grew up wanting to work in the mine. He worked his butt off to become the superintendent, very hard worker. And Elsie didn't want to live in a mining community. She actually moved to Florida uh, and Homer asked her to come back to be his wife. Uh, and so, you know, you have this interesting conflict where Homer sees the mine as everything, sees Colwood as everything. And Elsie sees the mine as and she'll say it multiple times, we'll come back to this, as dying. The mine is dying. This is not a place for our sons to be. This is a dangerous place to be. Uh, and then we also have Homer's older brother. And Homer's older brother is, like, super popular. His name is Jim. He is a football player. Um, and just, like, the, the ladies love him type of thing. Whereas Homer is kind of the more nerdy little brother. He loves to read. He loves school. Uh, and that's kind of the outline of the family. Uh, and so one of the main themes that we learn about at the beginning of this is this idea that Colwood is dying. Elsie's mom is very concerned about Homer pursuing a career in the mine. And we'll learn more details on why as we go through the book. But that is chapter one. All right. Anything to add? I don't think so. All right. Sweet. <laughs>